Aloha and mahalo for listening to messages from Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands. We pray that you are inspired, challenged, and encouraged to become all that God has called for you to be. Are you ready for God's word? Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Colossians. We're going through a book, the books that Paul wrote, because we believe that we have, as Victory Outreach, an apostolic anointing. Amen? In other words, we're called to plant churches. We're called to do great things for the Lord. Amen? We're, we're, we have a, a, we're, we're a, a very special part of the body of Christ. Amen? We're like His special forces. Right? And so we get the privilege to be stretched by Him. Amen? And that's why He challenges us a lot. Our discipline's got to be a little more intact, right, than possibly others because He expects more from us because he's called us to take the inner cities of the world amen so we're studying paul we're learning and from the different letters he wrote we we went through the book of philippians we went through the book of ephesians now we're starting the book of colossians and we're just still in february come on somebody amen turn with me to colossians chapter 2 i'm reading out of the new living translation actually and we're calling this series built to last Built to last. Starting in verse 6, it says, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. How many accepted Jesus as your Lord? Amen. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. How many know it doesn't stop at, at the, day, the day we say a prayer? We continue to follow him. Just recently, Billy Graham passed away. He went to be with the Lord. Amen. And uh, actually, one of the things that Billy Graham said, he says, when you hear them say Billy Graham is dead, don't you believe it for a second. He said, I will be more alive than ever before. Amen. And so he's, he's not dead. He's alive in Christ. Amen. He's with the Lord. Amen. Well, one of the things that he, that he mentioned, as I just read that, that, that scripture right there, you must continue to follow him. So after you accept Jesus Christ as Lord or Christ Jesus as Lord, you must continue to do what? To follow him. Continue to follow him. Well, one of the things that he says that he talked about was, um, was this work that God continues to do in our lives, that God continues to, to be at work in us even after our conversion. He says this, being a Christian is more than just an an instantaneous conversion. Being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. Tell the person next to you, I'm growing. One more scripture we're going to look at before you're seated. It says, verse 7, 2 Colossians, or Colossians chapter 2, excuse me, verse 7, let your roots grow down into him. Into who? Into Christ. Let, so we got to be more rooted in Christ. And here's where we get the title, Built to Last. And let your lives be built on Him. Let your lives be built on Him. Father, we love you, God. We pray that you speak to us today, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Tell the person next to you, I want to be built to last. I want to be built to last. We want you to be built to last. Today we're going to be partaking of communion a little bit, but I want to talk to you really quick in regards to just some things that this church went through. Every church is very unique. How many know Victory Outreach is unique? Amen? Amen. Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands is unique among, um, among the Victory Outreach family as well, right? And every church is unique, so God speaks to these different churches that Paul, God used to write to them, to minister to them. Paul didn't actually plant this church. But he cared for them. How many know that we should care for people even though maybe we're not the ones who led them to the Lord? Or, you know, you're going to meet people that are in the body of Christ. And we need to care for all the body of Christ. Amen? Yes. And, and so he, was, he cared for them and he wanted them to be raised up right. He, it was actually, you know, we have, you know how you have like two sides of grandparents? We kind of have two sides of grandparents. We do. We have the Pastor Rick side. Amen. Elder Pastor Rick. And then we have the Pastor Sonny Jr. side. Amen. Right. And so how many know we, we got some good spiritual DNA? 
Some of you may not know who we're talking about, but those are two generals in the army of God. They're, they are mighty men of God. And so we're kind of like their grandchildren, their spiritual grandchildren. Well, Paul was a spiritual grandparent to this church in, 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 of the Colossian church. They were actually reached not through him, but through one of his guys. Isn't that cool? The, one of his guys God used. We just finished going through the book of Ephesians. Well, that church in Ephesus, a guy got saved there. And the guy that got saved there, he's got a difficult name, is Epaphras. Epaphras, Epaphras got saved there in Ephesians. And, and later on, he went to Colossia and started, uh, to Colossi and started a church there. How many know that that's what you and I are going to be doing? Amen? I said, that's what you and I are going to be doing. We're going to be starting churches. God's going to use you to build the kingdom of God. You know, that's why the enemy's after you so much. Because he sees greatness inside of you. You know, the enemy even sees greatness inside of you. Not only does God see greatness inside of you, but the enemy sees it. That's why he takes you out. If not, he wouldn't be trying to take you out. Trying to hit your marriage, trying to hit your mind, trying to hit your heart, trying to hit the, you know, different, different areas in your life, physically, spiritually, financially, right? You get hit all kinds of ways because he's trying to discourage you, take, knock you out the box and stuff. But how many know that we're going we, we're, we're gonna to finish the race, amen? We're not going to quit. And so he was teaching them. They were a very, they were in an interesting culture, very similar to to the United States in, the, in these days. Very similar in, in regards to the, the kind of a culture they had going on. There were what's called, what people call today, pluralists. Pluralists is when you, when you basically say kind of like, hey, you know, your God is your God and that's cool. In other words, it, in, in, in there where, where they lived at, where the church was, was there, you, they weren't going to persecute you for being a Christian. Like you weren't going to get killed for being a Christian, just like in the U.S., they're not going to kill you for saying you're a Christian. They're going to say, that's fine with you, but don't impose that on me. I believe in this. I believe there's many different ways. How I many you heard that, right? And, and, they, and see, and it's very tricky. The enemy is very tricky. The enemy is very conniving. He's a schemer. And he's done it to where, where, where it's like there's, there's a culture now in, you know, the U.S., and there was a culture in this city as well, where Paul was writing to them, where they actually, the enemy uses that type of culture, I guess you could say, is to, to reduce Jesus, to reduce Jesus. Now, this is very much about what place does Jesus have in your life? You know, and I want to ask you, what place does Jesus really have in your life. And you know, there are, there are three dangerous places in which we could hold Jesus in our lives. And we've probably been there in all three of them. With, maybe not with our words, but with our life. Giving Jesus no place is a dangerous place. There was a time when you and I were not saved. Right? There was a time where you, were, you and I were not walking with the Lord. We were in sin. We were not born again. But thank God for the day we gave our life to Jesus. Amen? What a beautiful day that was. The day you and I surrendered our lives to God. You know, well, it's a dangerous thing to not have Jesus in your life. And we want to encourage you here today for you to accept Jesus into your heart. We believe that God loves you so much. We believe that if you're here today and there's sin in your life, that, hey, that sin could lead to your destruction. That sin, if you die in that sin, you know, you will have eternal death. And we, we believe that Jesus is the way out of that. That Jesus not only could save you, not, not only will he forgive you, but Jesus will set you free from whatever bondage you're struggling with. And he will give you eternal life on top of that. So accepting Jesus in your life is something you want to do. God loves you. Tell the person next to you, God really loves you. Don't get tired of hearing that. Don't get tired of hearing the power of the cross. The cross is powerful. 
The cross is powerful. Billy Graham said this, God proved his love, his love on the cross. God proved his love on the cross. When Christ hung and bled and died, it was God saying to the world, I love you. And God loves us. While we were in our, at our worst, while we were sinners, God still loved us. So I want to encourage you not to fall in this dangerous place where, where, you, where he ha- God holds no place in your life. And intercede and pray for those who, who say, man, you know, I don't believe in God. Pray for them. Or I don't believe in Jesus. Then there's those, a the second dangerous place. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question, what place does Jesus hold in your life? So there's three dangerous places. One is giving Jesus a no place. Second dangerous place is giving Jesus a low place. Giving Jesus a low place. In other words, hey, there's some of us that, that through the way we live our life, we could tell he's not a high priority to you. Let me tell you, if you're not tithing, Jesus doesn't hold a huge priority in your life. Because where your money is, your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if you're not giving the way you and I should, the way someone that, that, that is committed to something, when you're committed to something, your money follows it. Amen. Yesterday I was, I was blessed to pray in with, uh, we have a couple of coaches in the house that, that teach boxing. They're fighters, amen? But they're also fighters in the spirit, amen? Well, they train guys. One of the things that, that, that they do is they have them get their equipment, right? I mean, you got to invest. If you're going to be a fighter, you invest in the equipment. If you're going to be a baseball player, you invest in the equipment. If you're going to be a football player, you invest in the equipment. Whatever you do, you want to be part of construction, invest in your equipment, your tools, landscaping, invest in it. If you're going to be a teacher, invest, invest, invest. You can't, you can't say you want to do something and not invest in it. And so we don't give a low place to Jesus. We show it through our commitment, not just financially, but also with our time. How I many you know we put in work for the kingdom of God? We get our hands dirty for God. We get our hands dirty so others can be clean. We were dirty. Someone got dirty so we could be clean. Amen? And now we're pure because of the blood of Jesus. Because someone ministering to us, someone starting churches, starting life groups, starting opening up a home, opening up a women's home, a men's home. Now we're here today. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise for that. Praise God. Some of us don't have much of a relationship with God. In other words, you're saved, but Jesus still holds a low place. And I want to encourage you. To, to not to, to um, you know to have a devotional life every day to, to start it with Jesus. One of the things that they asked, one of his grandsons asked Billy Graham, they asked him, you know, why is he so humble? Everyone knew him as v- being very, very humble, even though he was friends with presidents, even though he was looked at ever since, I mean, when I got saved, he was already deeply into it, you know? I mean, he was, when I got saved, I, I remember even then he was looked at as America's pastor. Someone said he was, you know, for the Protestants, which we are, he, he was our, like, our Mother Teresa or our Pope kind of thing, right? In other words, he was like a key figure within our, 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 our beliefs, right? Within our movements, within the Christian, um, you know, world, I guess you could say. He preached to over... 215 million people face-to-face. Over 215 million face-to-face. Not to mention, not to mention all the books he wrote and being on television and being on the radio and different sources of of media. Many of you maybe have heard his preachings and teachings and and things like that and you never saw him face-to-face or you're not in that 215 million count. But that's how much he preached. He lived for preaching. How many know we should be living for preaching? Amen? Amen. We should live to preach the good news. Well, one of the things that he talked about was having a relationship with God and having, you know, a devotional time with God. And and one of the messages that I heard of his, he talked about, you know, what kind of, you know, having having that daily relationship with God, daily relationship getting with the Lord, daily, 
you know, um, seeking his face. He said he recommends that you spend at least a half hour with God before you leave to your day, to your school, to work, you know, go on um, throughout, throughout your day. How many know we need a relationship with God? So we don't want to give Jesus a low place. Also, we, so we don't want to give him no place or a low place. And also, this was the problem with the church in, in the Colossian church. Is this third one, this third danger. Giving, the third dangerous place is giving Jesus an equal place. An equal place. This is where they were, what they were vulnerable to do. Giving Jesus an equal place. In other words, hear me now. Be careful. Be careful. Because you may try to do things that replace your relationship with God. That replace, you know, your Christian commitment that you should have as a Christian. So, in other words, you know, you know some, there's some people, there's a whole world of people out there that are into sports and that's their religion. In other words, they'll miss church on Sunday for, because of a baseball game, because their kids are in, in uh, baseball or basketball or, you know, there's some in, in football or, you know, and th- things of that nature. And, you know, there's a whole community. And let me tell you, a lot of those people, I've coached in those type of places. And let me tell you, you got some good people there. You, get, you meet some good uncles, good aunties, good parents that, that, you know, they got their tattoos and they live the bad life too. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, and they're trying to be good parents, and they, they're, they're involved with their kids, and they're, they're going to their kids' games. But let me tell you, they're so committed to that that they got no time for Jesus. They can't even be committed to a church. They can't be in a life group. They're not, they can't go to prayer services. They're not, they don't hold the key. They're not key pillars in no church, really, because that is their commitment. And... Society today has accepted that. Some of you maybe possibly have, instead of, you know, maybe prayer causing you to calm down, causing you to, you know, feel better about yourself, you're using exercise. Now, exercise is good, as you can tell. I'm very into that, right? <laughs> what's, 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 what's going on over here? What's the laughter about? Hey, you know what? But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that, that, that yoga doesn't replace prayer. What's that other stuff? Pilates? I don't know. I, I've just heard about it, right? Doesn't replace prayer. A devotional time with God. Being in the steam room. Oh, I feel so good when I come out of there. That, that shouldn't take an equal place from feeling good after a Friday night service of prayer. You understand what I'm saying? You may try different diets. What are different ones? You know, uh, drinking drinking lemon something, uh, uh, drinking vinegar, drinking this, drinking that. I've heard of years ago, fen fen, uh, all kinds of stuff. Patches. We had people walking around the church with patches. What's this patch? This patch helps me. It's a patch. But see, and that's fine. You may get into your diets and things like that, but that doesn't replace fasting. It does not hold an equal place. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying that there's a lot of possibly good out there, but it's not equal to Jesus. You, some, some may say, um, uh, you know, she's, she's into school or he's into school. Or, you know, maybe you're into school now. So you're not being involved as much because you're into school. Hey, those things are not equal to Jesus. See, and that's the spirit of this world. And that's a spirit that they struggled with because, see, it's easy for, for you to give, be given a pass. It's easy for you and I to even feel like it's justifiable. You, you could say, you know what, um, it's because I'm putting in a lot of hours at work. See, and there's good things to that because you're providing for your family. You're being responsible. You're supposed to work. That's good, right? 
You're supposed to spend time with your kids, and, and, and yes, they should be in sports and things like that. That's good. And yes, you should exercise and, and, and do all that and go into steam rooms, and, and you should do diets, and, and, you, that, and that's, that's all fine. But it should not take the place of Jesus in your life. It does not hold equal place. Let me tell you, this church struggled with all kinds of beliefs that even are out there today, even like fortune telling. Some of you say, huh, you know, oh, if I tell you my birthday's in May, May 17th, you'll say, oh, you're a Taurus. I am too. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> see, that's, a, that's, see, see, no, no, we, we're not Scorpios and, and Taurus and, and what are those other, what are those other things? <laughs> Sagittarius. Look at you guys. That's, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I said, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And, you know, people will, will, will you know, are in, you know, they're into science. You know, that, what's that one guy? Um, what's that one guy from that one Nacho Libre or whatever? He's into science. His friend, the skinny guy. You're like him, right? Well, that's how you look in the spirit, too, like that skinny guy. But we're here to get built up right. We are here to get built up right. Because, see, let me tell you, if you are, you know, and even, 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 you know, another teaching that was popular then, and it's, and it's making a comeback today, and that is bringing up Mother Nature. Let me tell you something. I see Father God. I don't see nothing about no Mother Nature. I, I, I'm serious. It's... it's, it's is what's the trinity god the father not god the mother right god the son not god the daughter right no but there's teachings out there and let me tell you there's people out there that that there's some good to some of those things so, so for example even the movement of go go green and 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 preserving trees and and okay now now i'm not putting some of those things that are good down, like that, that's fine. You know, tree, tree's fine. Let's go for it. That, that's fine. But don't get so into it that, that you're, you're saying things. Because let me tell you, it, it is the way the devil comes in. Now people are saying, oh, man, the universe made it happen. The universe? Oh, the universe is so good, the universe. When you forgot the master of the universe, amen? And I'm not talking about he-man. Younger people are like, he, man, what is that? Who is, who is this you speak of? <laughs> so here they are. They, there's all these teachings that, let me tell you, a lot of the things that the devil uses, he just recycles it. He just recycles it. Just recycles it. Ain't nothing new under the sun. You understand what I'm saying? And the same way Paul was like, Oh, no, 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 no. Don't be bringing that stuff in this house. Their problem wasn't, you know, it, it, it was not, because even they were known for love. So part of love that people misunderstand is that people think that love accepts everything. No, love has boundaries too. Love has boundaries as well. So just because we don't agree with the sin, we still love the sinner. Now, we don't so emphasize it to the point to where now it seems like we're rejecting the sinner. That's where the Pharisees messed up. You know, remember they, when they brought the prostitute, the, 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 no, excuse me, the adulterous woman, they caught her in adultery and they brought her to the temple to stone her. How many know we don't bring people to the temple to stone them? They brought this woman to the temple to Jesus so he could stone her. And you know what Jesus said? He who has no sin cast the first stone. So Jesus doesn't bring sinners to the church so he could stone them. Some of you got delivered from being stoned. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 
literally, right? <laughs> Got to be careful. And Paul was warning them. So we got to give Jesus, we got to make sure we don't give Jesus a no place or a low place or even an equal place. You have to make time for him and his church. Don't let nothing else take that time. Not work, not play, not a relationship. Not, let, let me tell you, I, you know, the Lord showed me years ago that the enemy was even going to use nonprofits. Nonprofits could be false prophets, you know. Because what it is, is that people will be committed to a nonprofit or to a foundation. And before you know it, really, that foundation is not even laid in Christ. In other words, listen, it's okay if we get involved and we know that there's projects out there that are good and, that, and that's good. It's not, you know, we even support some of them and we back some of those things up and, and we praise God for them. And I'm sure they have a mission and some of them are probably doing God's work within that. But let me tell you, it does not replace Christ. It doesn't replace your Christian walk and your commitment as a Christian to your church. It doesn't replace it. It is not equal. It is not equal to that. Let me tell you, there's a lot of good programs out there that do good. There's people who help drug addicts, but they don't help them with Jesus. But it's not that it's bad that they're doing something bad. They're helping a drug addict, but maybe they're helping their way, and that's fine. But we're saying it does not replace Jesus. So we need to do a lot of what we do. Everything we do, we need to do it through Christ. And I'm not talking about undercover it through Christ. Like, to, they don't even know, but I, I pray for them secretly. <laughs> oh, good job, undercover Christian. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, when I give them the handouts to the workshops that I teach at my nonprofit or at my job, you know, little do they know I laid hands on those things. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing of the Word of God. The Word of God doesn't just have good advice and truths we should live by and values we should live by, but also we have to preach the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you, yes, we have to be good examples. And yes, we're going to teach them truths from the Word that, you know, like, you know, you could teach someone forgiveness even though you're not shoving the, the gospel down their I, you could talk about forgiveness without talking about Jesus. You could talk about being faithful to your spouse without talking about Jesus. You could talk to someone about get, getting rid of their addiction to gambling or, or drugs or pornography and, and, the, and not be a Christian conversation because even a lot of people in the secular believe that you shouldn't do those things or we shouldn't do those things. But it is different when we speak the name of Jesus. So we not only are good examples, we also tell them about Jesus. Some of you got to take your witness another level. How about the ones who talk about Jesus a lot start being a real good example? Amen. And those who are good examples start talking a lot more about Jesus. Why don't we do both? And so... You know, as I, as I start to bring it to a close, I want to show you a video of, of, of um, a guy named Steve Harvey. He's a comedian. I don't recommend you hear him because he's still in the process. Amen? <laughs> but he, 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 does show, he does give a real cool introduction about, he says, you know, I guess basically what he's talking about here is like, I don't know if he's talking about like if Jesus was coming back, how he would introduce him. You know, like if you're an MC and... Um, I, I want you to take a look at this video. It's pretty, pretty powerful, I think. It's pretty cool. If I had the pleasure of bringing out Christ, this is just how I would do it. It ain't got to be the way you do it. You might not think it's just right, but this is how I would do it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long to list. He has done the impossible time after time. He hailed out of a manger in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, by way of heaven. His mother is still headlining in the Catholic Church today. His daddy is the author of a book that has been on the bestseller list since the beginning of time. He holds the record for the world's greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two fish, five loaves of bread. He can walk on water, turn water into wine. No special effects, no camera tricks. He has a head shot on every church fan across the country. Even before the kings of comedy, he was hailed the king of all kings, ruler of the universe, alpha and omega, beginning and the end, the bright and the morning star. Some say he's the rose of Sharon, and some say he's the Prince of Peace. Get up on your feet. Put your hands together and show your love for the second coming of the one and only. Wasn't that powerful? Amen. That was cool, right? Well, in closing, this is what Pa does. What he just did, Pa did that. I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. And he starts telling them this. I want the keyboard player to make his way, the worship team to make their way, actually. He starts telling him this. He says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Come on, Paul. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation, even Mother Nature. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realm and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in, un in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him he existed before anything else and he holds all creation together Christ is also the head of the church which is the body he is the beginning supreme over all who raised from the dead so he is first in everything for God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. By means of Christ's blood on the cross. And he says, this includes you who were once far away from God. How many know that includes us, who were once far away from God? You were his enemies, separated from him, 
by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now, I said yet now. Paul said yet now. He has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. In other words, don't get swayed by all these other distractions and don't make them equal to God. He says, don't drift away from the assurance you receive when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world and I, Paul, have been appointed as a servant to proclaim it. God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence right now, Lord. God, forgive us, Lord, if we have made anything equal to you. Forgive us, Lord. You know, my final point is, I mentioned to you that it's a dangerous thing to give Jesus no place. It's dangerous to give Jesus a low place. It's dangerous to give Jesus an equal place. So what must we do? We must give Jesus the highest place in our lives. Jesus must hold the highest place in our lives. Above family. Above making money. Above getting uh, physically fit. Above growing academically above any other teaching, above any religion, above anything else, we must put Christ a high first. Everything else, everyone else should be a far, 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 far second, an eternity of second. How about that? Christ first. Christ first. Make Christ first. Give him the highest place in your life. Don't give him a low place. Don't even give him just a high place. Give him the highest place in your life. Every decision you make, give him a high place. Every move you're going to consider, give him the highest place. Every job you're going to think about taking, every hour you're going to put in, Think about Christ. Put it through Christ first. Every relationship you're going to be with, put them through Christ first. Christ first. Christ first. Christ above all. Christ above all things. Above all creation. Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that, Lord, that you would be here right now. And if you're here and you want to put Christ first in your life, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. You could be listening over social media, over YouTube. Or you could be here present. And you, want, you say, you know what? I want to make Christ high first in my life. I want to give him the highest place. I don't want to intertwine him with anything. No, he's, he is, holds equal to no one. He's above all. And I want to make him above all in my life by the way I live. If that's you, I want you to say this prayer. I want you to say, God, forgive me for giving you no place at times, for giving you a low place at times. And God, forgive me for giving you an equal place. God, from this day forward, I want to do my best to give you the highest place in my life. You are supreme, supreme over all. I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I claim that today I have the victory, that from this day forward, because I am in you, 
because you are in me. I am new, a new creation. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you for your many chances. I surrender my entire life to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want the ushers to begin to pass out the elements for communion. And I want you to be in the presence and the glory of God right now. As the worship team goes ahead and ministers, they could even dim the lights a little bit. And, and I want you to just vast in the presence of God. Vast in the presence of God. Oh, the Spirit of God is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's my Savior.